Hey everyone, welcome to my build update video of the most popular build on my channel, the Ark Assassin's Cow Hunter. I wanted to do the build video in this format as opposed to my more traditional one that I typically do because I wanted to make the video a little bit more condensed. This build is pretty similar to the previous iteration of it that I showcased back in Lightfall, but there are definitely a few tweaks and upgrades that I wanted to make an official video about so that everyone can upgrade their hunter and have it be as powerful as it can possibly be in the current state of the game. So today I'm going to talk through two Two different mod setups that are available for this hunter depending on what situation you're in. I want to talk about a few playstyle updates, a few additional tips and tricks that I did not mention in the previous iteration of this guide, and I also want to kick off the video by showcasing my fashion because that's something that people always ask about. So here you go, you can take a quick little screenshot of the screen. While you do that, I do want to ask if you watch a good handful of my videos and you're not already subscribed, I would appreciate if you would consider subscribing. You just scroll down a little bit and check to see if you're not subscribed. Uh, I know it seems silly, but it genuinely does help me continue to make all of these build guide videos and solo falls guide videos and whatnot. So as far as the armor here, Lux Sleeves and the Dynamo Current Vest are both Eververse items, so you will have to spend a little bit of silver to look exactly like this. The Whisper of the Victor Strides are from this past Guardian Games event, and the Coronation Cloak I don't exactly know where that is from. It has the 30th anniversary icon, so I'm assuming maybe Dares of Eternity would be my guess. If I'm sure people can say in the comments where the Coronation Cloak is from. If someone could drop it down there, I'll pin the comments so people can see. Unfortunately, Honors of the Nine is a shader that's no longer obtainable in the game, but you can get pretty close to that all white look with Bitter Pearl, which is from the Vault of Glass. You have to run around and pick up like 12 shards of glass. I actually have a guide video for it. I'll put it in the description where you can search Mactix Bitter Pearl in the YouTube search bar and you'll get pretty similar. So we're going to kick things off by doing a quick little recap on the subclass fragments, abilities and whatnot, just for those who haven't maybe played the build in a little bit or for those who are being introduced this build for the very first time. Obviously, the main abilities here are the Combination Blow Melee Ability and the Gambler's Dodge Class Ability. Combination Blow being where if you get a final blow with this Melee Ability Charge, it will consume the Melee Ability in exchange for a stack of Combination Blow that increases all future Melee damage, and it will additionally completely refill your Class Ability, which is obviously great because Gambler's Dodge allows us to dodge next to an enemy to refund our Combination Blow. So we get to, you know, punch something then kill it, then dodge, punch something, kill it, then dodge, all while stacking it up, increasing our melee damage. Our other abilities, Gathering Storm, obviously the best Arc Hunter super in the entire game, great for tanky bosses, great for single target, and great for AoE ad clear. Just off the charts, super good. I absolutely love the super, I'm happy they added it to the game. Also have Pulse Grenades, the best PvE Arc Grenade in the entire game. And as we get into the gameplay, we'll show how you can basically be throwing this grenade every one to two seconds. It's kind of crazy how fast you get the cooldown on it. For aspects, we have Lethal Current, where after dodging, which is pretty frequent, because as we said, your loop is pretty much melee kill, dodge, melee kill, dodge. So pretty much after every kill, your next melee attack is increased lunge range, which makes it easier to hit targets. Jolt's targets, which for those who don't know how Jolt works, Jolt is a debuff applied to an enemy, where if a jolted enemy takes additional damage, it will proc the jolt, doing extra damage to that enemy and spreading lightning to all nearby enemies. And then Lethal Current also creates a damaging aftershock that is also buffed by combination blow. So if you have combination blow times three, it'll buff your melee and the damaging aftershock of Lethal Current. One melee is basically equivalent to two melees worth of damage. So this effectively doubles your damage alone in this aspect. Additionally, damaging any jolted target with melee attacks also blinds them. And also that damaging aftershock that comes from the Lethal Current will proc the jolt that you apply on the target. So it synergizes really well with itself. Lethal Current is probably one of the best aspects in the entire game. Aspect number two is Flow State, where if you defeat a jolted target, which again, is pretty much every target that we punch, thanks to Lethal Current, you become Amplified. Amplified already gives us a ton of buffs. It gives us increased sprint speed, increased jump height, increased slide distance. And while you're sprinting, it gives you bonus damage resistance. But thanks to Flow State, we also get additional benefits when we're Amplified. So for example, your dodge recharges more quickly, which might not seem like it's important because as we said every melee final blow will refund our dodge but sometimes you're in a situation where you do a melee kill and then you dodge to try and get your melee back but there's actually no enemies around you to proc the gambler's dodge what flow state does is since we're amplified after pretty much every kill if that ever happens to you the increased dodge recharge rate will actually give you your dodge back before your combination blow stack timer expires 
meaning that you're pretty much never losing combination blow times three, even if you mess up a dodge. Additionally, from flow state, you're more resilient while dodging, so it just makes you overall tankier with the build because you're dodging a ton, and you get increased reload speed while you're amplified, which is incredible for boss DPS phases because typically you're not going to be punching bosses most of the time, even though this build is amazing at punching, you're going to be using a weapon. So flow state really helps with that a lot. Finally, for our fragments, we have spark of feedback, where if you get hit, your next melee punch will do increased damage, which is great for the tankier targets. We have spark of resistance, where if you're near three or more enemies, which is pretty much always because it's a melee based build, you're always going to be inside of packs of enemies. You gain increased damage resistance, which is great. And then the other two fragments are specifically to help our grenades, which like I said, will be thrown basically every two seconds with some of the mods in this build. So shock, our grenades will jolt targets, which will do extra damage and helps us with our flow state, helps us get amplified, and magnitude, which allows our lingering arc grenades, which pulse grenade is a lingering arc grenade. It'll have them last longer. I think it's about 25% longer. It goes from six seconds to eight seconds or something of that nature. So really, really nice. For stats, the only thing you really need to worry about is tier 10 resilience and tier 10 discipline. High intellect is nice as well, but you don't need to care about your strength whatsoever because your gambler's dodge is always going to refund your melee. You don't really need to care about your mobility because your combination blow is always going to refund your class ability and flow state is going to give you increased class ability regeneration when you do mess up your dodge. And you don't really need recovery because every single final blow that you get fully heals you from Assassin's Cow. So those three stats are the only ones that really matter that much. Now for the first mod setup, hands-on is awesome. Awesome. It has you get your super insanely quick. We'll showcase that in gameplay in a sec. And Dynamo, which gives you super when you dodge near targets, which is always, which additionally helps you get your super really quick. You'll basically be throwing off supers every like 20 to 30 seconds. It's kind of ridiculous. We then have heavy handed so that your powered melee final blows create orbs of power. Not only do your combination blow melee kills create orbs of power, but kills from the damaging aftershock also create orbs of power because that counts as melee damage. Additionally, even if you don't have your melee ability available, if you have the combination blow buff, Melee kills will still create auras of power. We'll showcase that in a second, but it's absolutely ridiculous. We then have two copies of impact induction. Anytime you do damage with a melee attack, which is all of our kills, reduces your grenade cooldown. That's part of what is going to allow us to throw so many grenades. Here, you don't really need stacks of armor charge for anything. So we run emergency reinforcements. So when you have three or more stacks, it will consume them if your shields are broken. So you get temporary damage reduction, makes it pretty much impossible for you to die. Down here, we have more grenade energy stuff. So whenever we pick up an orb of power, Power, we reduce all ability cooldowns, and then we have two for innervation to put a big bump into our grenade. Altogether, that's the best configuration for getting the most possible grenade cooldown. One absolution and two innervation. Obviously, absolution all abilities. We don't really care about our dodge or our melee ability that much, but this setup gives more grenade energy than just going three innervations. So that's why we have that. Same thing down here with distribution and bomber. It's better than just doing two bomber, but dodging near targets or just dodging in general gives you grenade cooldown. And then the final mod, the new one this season, which makes this build insanely good and it makes the build so much easier to use because you don't ever have to worry about scavenging orbs, is powerful attraction. Every time you dodge, any orbs nearby, you just automatically collect them which means when you dodge, you get a ton of grenade energy back from both of these mods, but also from all three of these mods because it just automatically collects the orbs. And then you also get grenade energy back from the impact induction, from punching, and the, it, it's just such an easy build to use. And then finally, we have some artifact mods. Now, if you're watching this video outside of Season of the Deep, this build is still ridiculously good. Don't think that it's ruined because the seasonal mods are gone. They just make it better, obviously, because it's additional benefits, but this build is still ridiculously strong without the seasonal mods. The ones you want to look out for here are electric armor. So when you're amplified, you're actually amplified for longer, caps out at 20 seconds. You want thunderous retort, so you get bonus arc super damage if you cast it while you're amplified, just helps with gathering storm boss damage. Amped up so that you get damage resistance while amplified, gives you even more damage resistance. Pretty much impossible to die with how much damage resistance you have from amplified sprinting, from spark resistance, from emergency reinforcement. Is you can't die with this build. You've got shock and awe, so that arc final blows while you're amplified, summon a burst of lightning that jolts targets. This one I actually don't really notice too much in gameplay. I'm not gonna lie, because we're already jolting everything. We've got the damaging aftershock, but surely it can't be hurting, right? And then we have lightning strikes twice, where after throwing an arc grenade, you get increased grenade regeneration for a, a short time and then arc final blows extend the duration of that benefit further helps us get our 
grenades, although I doubt that one's gonna be super noticeable because you're gonna be getting so much energy back from the mods we talked about previously. The other thing that you need to have on this build is a one-two punch shotgun. I get asked all the time, what one-two punch shotgun should I get? What if I can't get a found verdict? What if I can't get an Astral Horizon? The only reason that I'm using these one-two punch shotguns is because they're the ones that were in my inventory at the time. It literally does not matter whatsoever which one-two punch shotgun you're using. As long as it has the perk one-two punch, you're good to go. You're solid. So go into Destiny Item Manager, type up one-two punch, find one that looks pretty to you, infuse it, you're good to go. Additionally, you'll notice we have double special. I think double special is a staple of this build. We'll talk about why a little bit more. I know double special can be a little bit daunting. I, I'm typically someone who always liked to run a primary weapon previously, but double special is 100% the move of this build, specifically for how ammo drops work in Destiny 2. You'll see why in a bit. The final thing we need to talk about with this build is your keybinds, because they're extremely important to the success of this build. Make sure you check this because they might be wrong and you would even know it. You can also do this on controller. If you go to the controller tab, go to button layout and click on custom. This is not just an MK thing. If you play on console, you're still good to go. For the key binds for this, you want to make sure that your key binds are on auto melee. For some builds, you want charge melee and uncharged melee, typically for builds where you're throwing an object. So for example, Bonk Hammer Titan, where you're throwing the throwing hammer, you want your buttons to be on charge and uncharged melee, which basically what that does is it'll always prioritize your powered melee over your uncharged melee, no matter how close you are to an enemy. But the problem with this is, for whatever reason, if you use your melee immediately after shooting a weapon, it will use your uncharged melee over your charged melee. So if you look at me punching, I have my combination blow up, you'll see that like my fist has this little arc effect on it. But if I shoot and then punch immediately after shooting, you'll see that my fist had no arc effect. It's not actually using my melee charge which is a big problem because if we're using a one-two punch shotgun, obviously it's gonna be very common for us to go shoot instantly into a melee. And we wanna make sure that that melee uses our charged melee so that we can apply combination blow and refresh our stacks when, whenever we're killing enemies. So if you go to auto melee, just make sure keybind on auto melee, and then I set these to a keybind that I don't use. Now, if we do our regular melee punch, we get the arc effect. And if we shoot and punch afterwards, we get the arc effect again. So very important to have that. Like I said, if you have it changed, you might not even notice because it's still gonna feel like your melees are going, but you're actually, if you're doing a melee right after you went to your one-two punch, it's actually doing your uncharged melee as opposed to your charged melee, which is obviously a big problem with this build. You wanna always be using your charged melee. Now, one of the first things we wanna talk about with this build is your combination blow stacking. The weakest state of this build is when you have zero stacks of combination blow. And this is where mastery of this build really comes in big, is learning how to get your combination blow stacked up because once you're at times three, you're one-shotting literally every enemy. It's literally going to be as simple as finding weak enemies in the arena. So stuff like Acolytes, stuff like Dregs, stuff like Thralls, and prioritizing them with your combination blow to get your stacks up. Even at the beginning, it takes me two melees to kill that guy. Then after I have one stack, I can start having an easier time stacking it. But you'll notice if I punch this guy, my lethal current aftershock killed him. Which, although that still procs Assassin's Cowl makes me invisible, you'll see my combination blow is still at four seconds at one stack, and I still have my melee ability. You have to make sure that the final blow on the enemy comes from your combination blow melee itself and nothing else to actually refresh your melee charge and to actually give you a stack of combination blow. Now, like I said, the aftershock blows will still make you invisible. So from a safety perspective, you're still fine, but you just wanna keep in, that in mind and make sure you're always looking at the bottom left of your screen to make sure that your melee charge is actually getting consumed so that it refreshes your dodge, so that it upgrades your combination blow stacks, refreshes the timer, so that you can continue dodging, so that you can get more lethal current aftershock procs, and so you can just keep the rotation going. Another thing I want to showcase is that orb generation and Assassin's Cow powered melee final blows healing you and making you invisible. So right now you'll see I don't have my powered melee, but I have combination blow times three for 12 seconds. If I punch this guy, I still go invisible and I still make an orb despite not having my melee ability up. And that is, and even though it's not refreshing my combination blow stacks because I didn't have my melee, it's still creating orbs of power as you can see in the bottom left of the chat. And it's still making me invisible and still fully, fully healing me with Assassin's Cow. So if you're fighting a bunch of squishy enemies, you don't necessarily have to dodge in between every single one. You really only have to dodge when you need to refresh your combination blow. So dodging obviously gives you your melee back or dodge when you're fighting against a tanky enemy 
and you need to reproc your lethal current aftershock so that you do extra damage to them. Now, like I said, another thing I want to showcase is the grenade speed at which you get your grenade back. So if I throw my grenade right there, kill that guy, dodge, kill another guy, my grenade's already back. So about every two melee kills, if you look at my grenade meter, we're just punching these guys. Every time we dodge and every time we melee something, we're getting a ton of grenade energy. So about every two melee kills, completely with that one, but yeah, every two melee kills, we're getting our grenade back. Dodge or pick up from powerful attraction, two to three results may vary, I suppose. But as you can see here, you're going to be getting off a ridiculous amount of grenades in addition to killing every single thing in the arena and fully healing off of everything in the arena uh, with your melee abilities. So this build really has it all. It excels in absolutely every single aspect. I, I don't know how you couldn't fall in love with this build. Another thing that I wanted to showcase, like I said, too, was how quickly you get your super back. So we're going to chuck our super here and just see how quickly we get it back from orb generation, from hands-on proccing, and from all that stuff. So we're already at about a quarter back. I wish I had a few more adds. Already a half back. We're gonna get one, two punch off on that guy. The aftershock killed him, so I still have my melee. We're about 30 quarters now. And, oh, there. I So you'll I dodged and there were no enemies around me. But look, my combination blow is still at times three. And if you'll notice, I can still go invisible because I have combination blow despite not having my melee ability. And my dodge, thanks to flow state, giving it back to me faster while I'm amplified, comes back up before I lose combination blow. So you're really never in a dangerous position with this build in any capacity. Since I paused that train of thought to explain that, I wanna do the super thing again. So we'll chuck the super real quick. We'll see how quickly we can get our super back. So right there, we're at about a quarter back already. Keep dodging, keep killing everything. It'd be nice if some more enemies could spawn. I'll one, two punch that guy. At about two thirds back now. And just like that, super's back. So you get your super literally every like 20 to 30 seconds, depending on how many enemies are in the arena. But it's, you know, it's, it's, no, no exaggeration, it's it's no clickbait, nothing like that. Get your super packs, it's, it's super absurd. And here I want to show a quick example, like I said. Uh, so we have zero combination blow stacks right now. This is the weakest state of this build. But like I said before, the main way that you want to get into your loop, this is a big part of mastering the build, is roaming the arena and finding these squishy targets that you can use as cannon fodder to stack up your combination blow. Now that we're back up at times three, we can one hit literally everything, we're completely safe, we're back up to the races. Additionally, like I was talking about previously, that lethal current aftershock being, uh, if the lethal current aftershock is the kill, even though you still go invisible, it will not consume your melee charge. So for a situation like these wizards, where lethal current aftershock is what kills them, I did not refresh my combination blow still on my melee. So after I kill that wizard, I have to go find another enemy to go one hit so I can consume combination blow, refresh the timer, and so I can refresh my dodge so that I can use my dodge and get another lethal current aftershock for the next tanky enemy. Again, you only really need to dodge in between every single kill if you're dealing with tanky enemies. If you're dealing with primarily squishy enemies that you can all one hit, you really only need to dodge in between every three or four kills strictly so that you maintain your combination blow stacks by consuming your melee charge to refresh the timer. So once again, to showcase how truly quickly you absolutely obliterate every enemy, even tanky ones, these tanky knights right here, a shotgun shot and a melee and they're dead. One, one two punch is that strong against these guys. This guy, boom, lethal current aftershock is gonna kill him. It'll still make us invisible, but it won't refund our melee. So we do have to melee one more thing so we can get our dodge back, new lethal current. This guy, nice lethal current, and then get our lethal current back. And then the ogre. It's, you one-shot literally everything. And this is why I love Assassin's Cal over Liar's Handshake, to be honest, because I just don't find the extra damage of Liar's Handshake, uh, which, by the way, is actually gets a little less damage overall from 1-2 Punch. It's a little more damage than Assassin's Cal, but not by a crazy amount. I don't find Liar's Handshake too good for neutral game. Could be a little better for bosses, but for something like this, I'm one-shotting everything anyway, so I don't really need the extra damage from Liar's Handshake, to be honest, and I would much rather have invisibility and a full heal on every single kill versus a smaller heal on every other hit with no invisibility. I think invisibility is, like, the strongest 
thing in the entire game, um, especially if you know how to make the best use out of it and you know how to draw it out and you know how to use it to move around the arena, you know, getting invisible, then moving to the next target to extend your invisibility, things of that nature. If, if you get really good at understanding how to chain your invisibility together, understanding how to maintain these gameplay loops, it's not possible to die. You will never die in Destiny 2 unless you make a great mistake. So I, that's why I absolutely love Assassin's Cal over Liars in like 99% of situations. Now, like I said, I think Assassin's Cal is better than Liars Handshake in 99% of situations. This right here is the 1% where I do think Liars Handshake is better than Assassin's Cal. Bosses that you can damage with melee. However, there are so few of those in Destiny because most bosses are just not in melee range or they have a mechanic where they, they'll they just kill you if you're too close to them or they have some sort of stomp mechanic to push you away. Most bosses, you're going to end up shooting with a rocket or shooting with a linear or something like that. And for these melee bosses, you can use Lament as well, which heals you just like Lyra's Handshake does. In any other activity where you're doing ad clear, Grand Masters, anything like that, the Assassin's Cow gives you enough damage to kill them in one to three shots. And having the extra survivability from all the invisibility, from the full heal on every kill, to me is just... You know, I'm willing to sacrifice one extra punch on an enemy for bonus survivability through Assassin's Cow. Another thing I want to showcase with Assassin's Cow is what I call the Invis Super. So for those who don't know, in Destiny, there's something, I it doesn't have an official name, I call it the Grace Period, but it's about a one second timer, maybe half second, one second timer, immediately after you go invisible, where you can do absolutely anything and it will not take you out of invisibility. So something neat you can actually do to further remain safe and further remain invisible in situations is you can actually throw your super while staying invisible. The way you do that is really simple. As you're walking up to get a melee kill, you just pop super immediately after you get the melee kill. The super will cancel the animation of your melee and will occur within the grace period so that you complete your super cast and you'll stay invisible even after the super cast. Now, earlier in the video, I emphasized the importance of double special and throughout our run, you can see how many heavy bricks are on the ground. When you're running double special, if you're holding a special weapon, when enemies die, even if they don't die to a weapon, obviously we're killing everything with our fist, they have a significantly increased chance to drop heavy ammo. As you can see right here, the floor is absolutely littered with heavy ammo. And the vice versa is true. If you hold a heavy weapon, you'll have significantly increased drops for special ammo. Considering that if you really love using a primary weapon, you can get a primary weapon-like effect from something like a trace rifle, kind of feels like a primary weapon. It just takes special ammo. You can completely skyrocket your ammo drop rates and have much more control over when enemies drop ammo and what type of ammo they drop by running a double special build. And you really don't sacrifice anything at all because typically a primary weapon is gonna be used to kill trash red bar mobs. But with this build, you don't need that in any capacity because you're killing literally everything with your melee punch. That's why I always recommend double special with this build. And you can use double special to optimize your loadout in areas where this build is maybe not quite as strong. Specifically in the range department, you can have something like an Arbalist along with your one-two punch shotgun. You can have a Sniper along with your one-two punch shotgun. So uh, you can really fill in the gaps with this build and all around create a build that genuinely has no weaknesses in all of Destiny. Now, where the previous mod setup is your best bet for activities where add clear and infinite boss DPS phases are the focus, so things like some dungeon encounters, some raid encounters, and Grandmaster Nightfalls, that's going to be where that mod loadout is best. However, if you're ever in an encounter where you have a limited time DPS phase, so a raid boss or a dungeon boss are pretty much going to be the only two situations for that, you'll probably want to go something else. Like we said, this build and really most melee builds are not particularly good at DPSing most bosses because most bosses don't allow you to get that close to them or stay that close to them. So you're gonna to have to incorporate some weapons. So the only thing we've really changed here is we have dropped our emergency reinforcement for a concussive dampener. So we still maintain a little bit of damage resistance and we are instead using our armor charge stacks to fuel weapon surge mods because like I said, we're gonna to have to use a weapon. So I have Gallahorn equipped right here. Our helmet remains the same. Gloves are entirely the same. Class item is completely the same. So overall, we're gonna have slightly less bursts of damage resistance and we're gonna have slightly less grenade refund through orb pickup. 
However, we're going to significantly increase our weapon damage because we will pretty much always have three stacks of armor charge because we make an orb on every single melee kill and we easily collect it with powerful attraction. We don't even have to run over it. Now, as I said before, if you start to understand how to best utilize invisibility in encounters where your primary goal is surviving, you truly do enter somewhat of a state of invisibility because you can use enemies as refreshes to your invisibility. So instead of necessarily wiping out everything as fast as humanly possible, we instead kind of just want to use our invisibility to travel to the next enemy so that we can kill them to refresh our invisibility as we're completing whatever encounter mechanic that we're trying to do. So for example, in this encounter, my goal is to get the deep sight and figure out where the night kill locations are. So I'm just kind of drawing out my invisibility as I roam around the map. I see where the locations are, refresh my invisibility on that guy, and then I'm looking around to do the mechanic as I kill enemies. Another cool thing that I bet a lot of people don't know, do me a favor, subscribe if this is your first time hearing about this, but you can actually manipulate enemy aggro while invisible. And to do so, all you have to do is make a noise. Now you can make noise by either activating your boost jump or by dodging. So for example, if I refresh my invisibility here this night, he just heard me dodge over there, but if I double jump, he hears me and then he starts moving towards me. And so if you look at these acolytes, who are aggroed to where they thought I was previously, if I double jump, they all immediately turn towards me. And so, while that's not super relevant for most enemies in Destiny, the melee enemies in Destiny, it is huge for it because you can lure them to you by doing double jumps because they hear you and then they know, oh, that's where they are, even though they can't see you and hit you. So for an encounter like this against Vorlog, it's incredibly strong. Very, very niche, but you know, a really, really good piece of information to have in your pocket. So like I said, for these mechanical encounters, all we're doing is trying to refresh our invisibility as we move around the map so we can complete the mechanics. So I'm not necessarily focused on killing these guys. I'm just focused on using them to refresh my invisibility. After I refresh my invis, I'm on to the next guy. I don't really care much about them. So one of the things I want to show you guys actually has to do with one-two punch. When you're using a one-two punch shotgun and you shoot the enemy, you actually have enough time to get off two melees that will be buffed by the one-two punch damage. So if you're ever fighting an extremely tanky enemy, you don't need to do your shotgun in between every single melee. You can do a shotgun shot for one-two punch, two melees, and then if that enemy is still not dead, then you do another one-two punch, shotgun shot, two melees, shotgun, two melees, etc., etc. rinse and repeat. Now, the final thing I want to show you is, like I said, our DPS when we have the amplified buff, which increases our reload speed through flow state. If you look at my reload speed right now, my reload speed is pretty fast. Now the amplified has just ran out, my reload speed is significantly slower, but all we have to do is dodge and punch an enemy that jolts them from lethal current, and then killing a jolted target gives us amplified through flow state, so now we're amplified again, and we get the increased reload speed. I guess uh, I don't have enough rockets to reload. Here we go much faster than a non-amplified reload speed. Uh, like, and like I said, don't use Galahorn for DPSing this on solo balls, which is all I had on me at the moment. Um, it actually doesn't look too terrible. <laughs> I'm kidding. Pro probably stick to a legendary tracking rocket if you do use a rocket. But that's uh, the last thing I wanted to show you about Arc Assassin's Call Hunter. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the video. It was a lot different than my typical build videos, but the goal was to make every single second as informative as possible and show you every possible detail about this build. That is everything that I know about this build and I would consider myself pretty good on it. And I think it's a build that is well worth learning because I'm not gonna say it's the best build in the entire game because there's so many good builds uh, in Destiny 2, but I, I, I would argue it's at minimum a top three build. So I highly recommend investing some time into practicing this build. Um, and learning it because it's good in GMs, it's good in raids, it's good in solo fallout dungeons. And overall, it's really, really fun. And it looks really, really cool. You use this build in front of your friends, they're gonna see you rolling around, punching everything, a bunch of arc webs going everywhere. And <laughs> they're gonna look at you and be like, dude, I, what happened? We played last weekend and now all of a sudden you're wiping entire rooms on your own. Like, how'd you get so good at the game? And you know, you don't have to tell them it's all because you can just say, I don't know, man, just been practicing. Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoyed. Once again, consider subscribing if you like the video. And thank you so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.